So for a modulus for a complex number, um, it's basically the distance from the origin. So like you'll always see it denoted by these straight lines around the complex number. So for example, I said some complex number here, Z1 is equal to two plus two I. I want to find, and it just says Z1 inside these straight line brackets. So you might know those brackets as absolute value also. But those straight line brackets here means the modulus or distance from the origin. Now, it is as simple as just actually using like Pythagoras' theorem or a version of that. So it, the important thing is that I'll give you a formula now that will always work for it. But the one thing I would say to you is, the one that we have to be important is don't include the I's in this formula. So uh, this is the way I give it out in class, right? So we put a box around that and say, look, just remember that, right? So it's the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. But we say, very important, do not include I, right? So if you include I, it will just mess this shortcut up for you, right? So uh, let's do it for this one here. So it's the square root and the real part is 2 to be squared. And the, uh, with the imaginary part is also 2 to be squared. I didn't put the I in. That would be the square root of 8 or... Uh, 2 root 2 if you're doing your calculator maybe so that's the modulus it's just the distance from the origin right it's always useful to plot your um, complex number especially when you're starting off solving them we can see here that this is called an argon diagram so the plot of a complex number the y-axis would be where the imaginary stuff goes and the x-axis is where the real number stuff goes so you can see the green dot here i have for z1 is above the real number 2 and across from the imaginary number positive 2i and that's why that dot is there so our modulus for this particular number is root 8 or 2 root 2 whichever you prefer so the argument or theta as we call it is the angle made with the positive real axis now it's super important for you as a Leibniz student to go to the positive real axis in general we do not use negative angles here so if you're my student i would insist you use the positive one it just makes your life a little bit easier when you get to the exam and they insist on giving a positive answer um, let's look at the simple case first and the complex number i just gave you two plus two y what's the argument for that well it's as easy as thinking about your soca toa rules in fact we'll probably always use the tan um, ratio here but let's look at it so theta this is the positive real axis is made with this line here essentially right this is the line we make our angle with so we come up to here we're going anti-clockwise always but i'll draw the other angles in so you'll understand it so let's look at this angle here how i like to think about this is just as a right angle triangle so for z1 let me just draw like a right angle triangle that represents that angle in there so theta will be in here now i just forget about the imaginary process and think that i'm out of distance here of two i'm up a distance of two also you notice i forgot about the eyes there don't care about them i'm just looking for the type of angle that would make now it may be obvious to some of you what that angle is but let me just show you how you would get that so here's our theta here's our opposite side and here's our adjacent side when we make that little representation right angle triangle so that's going to be the tan inverse and of course it's opposite over adjacent that's two over two and tan inverse of one is going to be 45 degrees now only thing is we need that in radians and that's pi over four if your calculator is already in radians it will give you pi over four but if you get an answer of 45 degrees you just realize that you should be putting this in in radians you will see they will always use radians in complex numbers and i like to remember that 180 degrees is equal to pi so therefore you can it's simple to remember that 90 degrees is half of that so it's pi over 2 45 degrees is half of that again so it's like pi over 4 and so on so on so they'll always tend to be these nice special angles like pi over 4 and something simple so it's 45 degrees, but we're going to use pi over 4 for that angle. So let's look at a little bit slightly more difficult. So Z2, the angle's made back to here, right, like so. So there's two options you have here. You can either find the angle in here, and then you can add it to what you have 90 degrees there, or pi over 2. And you can add that little angle to bring it over the other bit, or you can take this angle in here, and you can go all the way over to 180 degrees, which is pi, and go back by subtracting that little angle. For us here, I think what we'll do is we'll take the first angle I mentioned, which is this little red dot here. We'll take that angle there and we'll add it to pi over 2. Because remember, pi over 2 is this for over this axis here, which is 90 degrees. So it's over here. We're at 90 degrees. We go on another little bit, which is the angle we're going to find. 
we add those two numbers together, that's our argument. So for Z2, let's look at the triangle we're gonna deal with. So the triangle is gonna look like this, made with the axis here, the imaginary axis. And the angle I said I'm gonna find is this little one in here. So let's think of the distances we're dealing with. How far up are we for Z2? Well, we're minus one across, so we're a length of one back this way. Okay, and how high up are we? Well, we went up to root three on the imaginary axis, so we're root three here. Okay, hopefully you can see that, that this triangle here is represented in a little diagram down here. We went back, remember, to minus one here, so that's a length of one, and we went up to root three i on the y axis, so it's up a length of root three. So for us, it's going to be the tan inverse. The opposite now is going to be one, and the adjacent side is going to be root three. Now there is a special angles in your logbook tables, but hopefully you can they're on actually page 13 And they're always going to be special angles But you can of course just put that ratio directly into your calculator and if you're in degrees just to remind you You're going to get an angle of 30 degrees, but what we want is pi over 6 So if your calculator is in radians, you will get a pi over 6 angle So pi over 6 of course is not our argument now for Z2 Remember that's this red dot we need to add that to this 90 degree section here. So how will that look? Um, that's just be pi over six plus the 90 degrees, which is pi over two. So that's like uh, pi over two, so that's like three pi over two. You can just do this in your calculator. And if you do that, you get, uh, what's that? Three pi over six plus, so we get four pi over six, which is two pi over three. Okay, so you get this, that's like 120 degrees, that doesn't matter. You can literally type this into your calculator if you're unsure and it'll give you 2 pi over 3. Is that alright? So I'll move across here to the last one. Slightly more tricky, but um, let's have a look on what's going on. So again, right, we have two options here. We can either find this angle here or this angle here. Now, this angle, I'll represent what angle we're looking for. So we're back to the real axis, so it goes all the way around like this. That's the angle we're looking for. So it's a huge angle. Now remember, the whole way around would be 2 pi. Or 3 quarter way around would be 1 and a half pi. Because this is 1 pi, 2 pi all the way around. So this mark here would be 1 and a half pi. Or 3 over 2 pi to there. And we could add that little red angle there to it. Or we could say we go all the way around to 2 pi. And subtract this little angle here. That's particularly what I like to do. So I'm actually going to find this little red angle in here. So I'm going to draw my triangle that represents that. So it looks like this. And my red dot's in here. And let's think about some distances here. So what was Z3? It was across one, like to there. And then it was down root three. I don't care about the minuses. I'm just talking about triangles. So I'll make my tan inverse for that. So my ratio of tan inverse for this angle is going to be the opposite, which is root 3, over the adjacent, which is 1. So what's this going to be? So you do that in your calculator, you're going to get 60 degrees. But what you should be getting, of course, is now pi over 3. All right? So pi over 3 is this small red angle in there. Now, I don't want that angle. I want all this stuff here. So what is all this stuff? Well, it'll be all the way around to 2 pi and back that pi over 3. So how we're going to calculate that is simply 2 pi minus pi over 3. So that's like a third off of 2. So it's like 5 pi over 3 if you do it. And that's the green angle. Hopefully that made sense. It's definitely one of the tougher things having to stick to that positive real axis. 